Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another Before You Buy and today we are looking at this the WRX 560 router I said router not router I said router there you go that's what it's called now in today's video I've already done like a massive review of this where I went through the hardware and the software and the capabilities and more but in today's video it's going to be much much tighter and compact and I'm going to give you five reasons why you should consider getting the WRX 560 for your home or business environment and also going to give you five reasons why you might want to sit on the fence and wait a little bit longer for something better to come along. Let's roll with number one. Of course, I was going to start with this one. SRM, or Synology Router Manager, is the software that this system arrives with. And when you buy it, of course you are paying for the hardware, but I would argue most of that money you're paying is going towards the software. And the software Synology Router Manager in version 1.3 right now is the best it's ever been. It is fluid as hell. If you have been dealing with routers in your personal professional life over the last few couple of decades, and let's face it, you almost certainly have, if you're watching this channel at least, and you'll know that most routers, generally the user interface they give you to be accessed via the web browser or maybe a mobile, it ain't great and generally they can be broken down into things that look like they're from about 2001 and being really boring and no graphical or awful or it is a data dump of information with little to no information about what any of the settings are and ultimately being too complex or too convoluted for the average person to use. SRM on the other hand is this whole graphical user interface that you access in the browser that is akin to an operating system. There's also the mobile app, which is incredibly fluid and intuitive. And the range of features of applications such as creating multiple SSIDs, creating multiple VLANs, distributing them accordingly to different physical ports on the system, allowing access and credentials to different users and user groups, and we'll get onto something good on that later on, as well as all the applications that are included with it in terms of security, in terms of data integrity, and in terms of traffic monitoring and the system general operation means that in terms of software and utility, this device arriving with SRM is practically worth the price of admission on its own. What is 5.9 gigahertz and why should you care? Well, when you're utilizing any kind of root device, not just this one, there are rules with uh, wireless devices. Uh, radio frequencies all the way across the spectrum they're not all free your own. They're not exactly, you can't just grab any of them. And it's devices have to be certified and allowed to work within certain radio frequencies. And some of them are barred from use, either for governmental use or they're utilized for other services. And in the case of 5.9, up until recently, it was reserved for traffic and um, like long haul type traffic. And it's only gradually with this whole area of the radio frequency available that they've kind of gone, they're not using it, it should be up for grabs more. And Synology have managed to roll in 5.9 gigahertz support with authenticated permission on their devices. What that means is, when you are interacting with the device with your laptop, your phone, or your whatever, you're connecting with the device either in Wi-Fi 5 or Wi-Fi 6, which this is, um, and with your device, you will have a certain amount of bandwidth. The more devices that are on the network, the more the bandwidth gets congested and people get less and less space. You can configure it with quality of service, um, updates and stuff within SRM that you can assign with the software to make sure some devices have dedicated full maximum bandwidth that they can handle. But overall, if everyone's using a very modern up-to-date device, they're gonna be on 160 megahertz blocks there on the, uh, on the frequency, on the transmission with the device. Now, you can only fit a finite number of these in an active connection within the boundaries of the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band of this device. So with that, introducing the 5.9 gigahertz radio frequency support on this device, opens up more space and it allows more of those 160 meg megahertz connections to be available on that single band of 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz at um, uh, 2400 megabits per second and 600 megabits per second supported on the device ultimately it is tremendously accessible for your client devices Next up, you knew I was going to talk about it, 2.5 GBE there on the base. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet is supported on this root device. And what does that mean? Well, it means that on that, on that port there, when you connect this to the internet going into your home or business, 
if you are running greater than gigabit in the internet connectivity, you are able, if you have the right connections, of course, to run it directly into this and get greater than one GBE speed, which is typically the restriction of gigabit ethernet ports at 109 megabyte, megabit, uh, megabytes per second. Now, if you are using an ISP connection that is greater than gigabit, make sure you are running it via a CAT or Ethernet RJ45 connection. So what that means is the chances are somewhere in your house on the wall is a box with the RJ45 cable that you can run into that 2.5 GBE port, or you may have a router from your ISP that gives you those speeds, has a 2.5 GB port on board, and that's what you connect into this, and then you run it as a pass-through. But that 2.5 GBE on this is also coupled with a separate WAN port there. So the 2.5 GBE port there can be used at both LAN or WAN utilization. In other words, you can use it for your internet or you can supply it to a device on your network that you want to provide two and a half times the performance bandwidth of other ports. But that also means failover. You're able to have more than one internet connection going into this and therefore if one drops, the other one takes up the slack and you won't lose connection. Very good for business, as well as support by the USB that I'll talk about later on. But yes, 2.5 GBE is available on this and I like it. Synology Safe Access. Again, when I said the SRM was worth the price of admission to get hold of one of these, frankly, a big part of that is Synology Safe Access. It is a single application within the range of tools available with it that is absolutely killer, all killer, no filler. It is an intelligent monitoring service for connected users and connected devices. To put that into any, like really break it down into easier speak, what that means is every time devices connect to this, you can, for example, assign identities on this for everyone in your household or business. Those individual users, as devices are connected, you can assign those devices to those people dynamically. Then you can, utilizing a series of smart schedules, smart filters, uh, also supported by Google Safe Search too, allow, it allows you to create a much more crafted and automated internet network. Now, say you've got kids and they've got to do homework. They're probably going to need the internet to do that, but you don't want them to go on social media. You don't want them to go on YouTube, stick around. What you can do is use the automated practice to allow specific devices in the home owned by certain people to have access to these specific websites and for a specific length of time. You can even choose to reward extra time or remove time from connected users. And if a person tries to go to a prohibited website, that then you, the admin, will be notified on the mobile app or just via your desktop. Whether you create a guest network um, external output, you can also create a series of authentication and limitation rules to that as well. And there's just a tremendous range of customizable services, all in an incredibly user-friendly manner, with images, very graphical, easy, to a digest interface, which can even be managed very easily from the mobile with DS Router 2.0. Ultimately, Safe Search is an absolute, uh, not Safe Search, sorry, Safe Access is an absolute wonderful application for this router. And it's pretty much the jewel in the Synology router crown of SRM. Bit of a minor one, this, but it's definitely worth talking about the USB port. This device has got a USB. Now that's not unusual. Plenty of routers have USB ports. Why am I making such a big deal about it? Well, firstly, that's a bit of a tone you got on you. Secondly, with that USB port, you can obviously do different things. You can attach a mobile device to have a cellular um, LTE SIM based internet as a failover connection or even as a primary connection if you choose. But more interesting, interesting you can attach a USB drive now, again, lots of routers have had USB ports on them that allow you to add a USB drive. But the majority of routers that we've seen in the market that have a USB port ask you to access the drive either by creating a Samba uh, share or a remote network shared drive like a map, or you access it in the browser in the most basic breadcrumb black and white text access with no um, G, uh, graphic user interface, no means to natively open uh, photos or particular like music or something from the interface there of that storage. Now, on the router, because it comes from Synology, one of the most popular, if not the most popular NAS brand in the world, 
all of that experience and those applications and services they've developed, they've utilized a lot of that in the access of storage on this device. There's multiple apps that you can install for databases, for media servers, and more. You can also use FileStation, a full comprehensive file management tool with this device. It isn't just that silly breadcrumb stuff. It is extensive. It is Windows File Explorer levels of all the different features and services from archival and extracting zips all the way down to copy paste, creating shared folders from within that. It is a very, very good application and certainly better than any other file management and USB storage management um, app that I've seen included in any router device. And again, it all comes down to that software. But it's not all good. There are things about this device that may not win everyone over. And alongside those five great things, I'm going to give you those five other things that, again, might make you go, I'll catch you the next one. That price tag. No matter where you are in the world, and it has just arrived. So at the moment, different regions have slightly different prices based on tax and inflation and different currencies. But right now, I could give you a vague number of around the 200 nicker mark insert your own currency there except if you're like australia and then it's like twice the canadian dollar honestly it's so confusing but when it comes to this device and its price tag that is a big big ask that is good software there's no denying it. it's great software but 200 nicker and then you've got a factor in the price the logistics and more for this router is a bit of a ball like one because it's arrived on the scene in the same week as the google nest pro a wi-fi 6 E mesh router, which although its software isn't as good as SRM in my opinion, is still all right to be frank. You'd expect it from Google, but the idea that that router is 180 inclusive of tax, that's cheaper than this. And it's Wi Fi 6E, it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles, but that's already a bit jarring. The next thing that's jarring is the price tag of that is not a million miles away from this. This is the RT6600. This is the prosumer powerhouse router from Synology that was released a few months ago. This device, again, you can pick it up on Amazon right now for about 260 including tax. These two have price tags that are just too close, given that this is a more powerful router with better bandwidth, more external antennae, and just generally being a much more capable router that overshadows a newer release device because of that price tag. And again, you might be watching this in the future and the price has changed. The price may have come down and this is just an intro price. It's an RRP, fine. Maybe in the future it'll be different, but right now at the time of recording and when you're watching this at launch, this device is just too expensive. I know what you're thinking. I just really waxed lyrical about that USB port. Why all of a sudden am I gonna start ragging on it? Well, nice and simple, there's only the one. There's only one USB port on this. Now, of course, you probably weren't gonna attach multiple USB drives. It's not like you can logically raid them, but at the same time, if you use that USB port for a USB drive, you can install apps on it, great. You can't use it for a, a failover. You're not going to be able to use a mobile SIM for failure. You're not going to be able to attach a printer. You're not going to be able to attach, although compatibility is limited on a lot of USB devices. But they, they, only having one port super annoys me. And I wish there was at least a USB 2 port with it. Only having one there forces the user to make a few decisions. And a lot of the applications that this runs on needs a USB port to work. If you don't have a USB connected, you can't install the apps. So again, only having one USB on this is a bit of a pain in the bum. That's right, this is a chunky monkey. Look at the size of it. Now, of course, I've used depth perception there. Of course, it's going to look big. I've brought it close to camera. It still looks like a Stormtrooper helmet, but let's get a bit of perspective here, okay? This is the mesh from Synology. It's a Wi-Fi 5 MR2200AC. This arrived, I think, in 2018 or 19. Um, look at the size difference between them. Look at the depth difference between these two devices. This thing is massive. It's nearly a whole 100% more router on top there. But it's when you compare it to this one, with this router that we mentioned earlier on, look at the thinness of this router. Look at the thickness of this router. 
it just seems outlandishly large um, and yes you know a lot of people aren't going to mind that because obviously that size part of that is integrating at passive cooling it's integrating all the many internal antennae that have been separated across the corners but still nonetheless that is a large router and lastly we can look at a NAS this is the 1522 that's a five bay NAS look at the scale between these two devices it's just enormous and it's not wall mountable either which means you're not going to be able to just pop it up there wall mounted to mesh with other devices this device is kind of going to have to be desk based maybe shelf based but it's a lot of space for a router there so i'm kind of surprised given its hardware specifications that it is as large as it is yet again another thing that i wax lyrical about that all of a sudden i'm going to neg but the 2.5 gpe port why is there only one it's really annoying to only have one port. Now, to put that into perspective, what I mean is, say you used that port for your WAN, you use it for your incoming internet. That's great, but any other connected device is now limited to one GBE, whether they like it or not. Now, maybe that's okay. You've got multiple devices connected, and therefore, they're all enjoying a good chunk and lion's share of that maximum 250 to 270 potential internet connection that's great but i think most users have one device connected to this maybe their editing suite maybe their gaming rig maybe whatever that they want to have priority of service they would like to enjoy their greater than gigabit internet connection speed which now they can't because it's limited to one gbe going into that port so why there isn't a second port or that at the very least the default WAN isn't also 2.5 GBE, thereby eliminating the need for that 2.5 GBE WAN uh, or internet connection using up that potential LAN connection there. It's just a bummer that there's only one port on this. I mean, points to Synology for jumping on board 2.5 GBE on the last couple of routers, but just one port is a right pain. Now, this last point is a bit niche and it really is only going to affect a small number of people but i do know there are going to be people that are going to have their nose put out of joint about this and it's to do with where the device sits in the family in your hardware environment when you are introducing synology routers into the mesh system particularly in the wi-fi 6 generation now the portfolio has got more diverse all of the mesh solutions can all be connected they've all got a backhaul you can cover a lovely wide surface area it's wonderful stuff but in order for that relationship of devices to work, the most powerful device in the, in the line has to be the primary router, with every other device just acting as a mesh point. They don't really have a graphical user interface or a direct access point. When you access it, all you're doing, if you want to get into SRM, is communicate with the main system via it. Now, most people are going to be like, it gives a crap. I want the most powerful unit as my primary, and they're right to do so. Maybe you bought the uh, RT6600 and you've been waiting for a Wi-Fi 6 mesh like pod type device to add to your collection. For you, you've got nothing to worry about. You're absolutely sorted. What about people that are using the RT2600AC? They want that to be the primary router due to its, you know, conf um, its kind of control and adaptability there. It has lots of antennae, it has a lot more broader scope of coverage, and it's the best device to be the primary. But this is more powerful. So there's questions about which one becomes the primary, and in some cases, you're not going to be able to set the devices up in the configuration and placement that you want because of that restricted primary and secondary relationship between the devices. Again, this is an incredibly niche Point, and it's only going to affect a small number of people but if you are partially upgrading your Synology router hardware network environment it might be worth noting if where your primary router is at the moment is be about to become invalidated by the introduction of a WRX560 in that environment you're almost certainly fine but this is just a small percentage that it might not work out for you for the best but this has been 
by before you buy on the WRX 560 router from Synology. If you have enjoyed this, I've done a full, much, much, much longer and detailed review earlier in the week. You can find that out in the comments in the in links in the description. And there are links to the full written review of this. And soon we're going to be doing some router comparisons very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. If you're going to get this device from Amazon and, you know, you want to help us out there are links in the description to amazon you can order wherever you want but if you were going to go to amazon anyway why not use the link it costs you nothing we get me and well, me and eddie get a kickback which goes directly into nas compares and helps us keep doing what we do lastly if you need help with your storage solution if you need help choosing the right router if you just need some advice there is the free advice section linked to the description over to nas compares as well as the free community support forum over on ask nas compares other than that thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time